Protists are a group of mostly single cell organisms. The strange thing about protists is that they are classified together, mainly because they don't fit into the other categories of life. They are not animals, fungi, or bacteria. Anything that don't fit into that categories is called as protists. The general characteristic of protista. Most protists are aquatic. They live in ocean, freshwater ponds, lakes, and streams. Some of them resemble animals, plants, and also fungi. They include all single-cell eukaryotes, unicellular, and contain membrane-bound cell organelles. They possess a well-defined nucleus, mitochondria, and a plasmic reticulum, and Golgi body. They reproduce both asexually and sexually. Their mode of nutrition is autotrophic and also heterotrophic. They move across the environment using either secretion or their locomotory organelles like flagella, cilia, and pseudopodia. Proteins are divided into five supergroups, which is excavata, chromal violata, rizaria, archeplastida, and uniconta. Proteins are an incredibly diverse group of organisms found in almost every environment on our planet. From the deepest oceans to the lushest forests, these tiny beings play crucial roles in the web of life. Proteins play a vital role in the ecosystems. Take a paramecium, for example. This tiny slipper-shaped organism glides through water, consuming bacteria and detritus, helping to keep its environment clean. It also serves as a vital food source for larger organisms. Plants like proteins produce one half of the oxygen on the planet during photosynthesis. Some proteins can even decompose and recycle nutrients used by human beings. They are also used to make medicines to treat high blood pressures, digestion problems, ulcers, and arthritis. In conclusion, as our journey through the hidden world of Priotista, we have witnessed your remarkable diversity, intricate structures, and essential roles in ecosystem. From cleaning our waters to generating oxygen, the microscopic are essential to our life. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms that include microorganisms such as yeast, malts, and mushrooms. These organisms are classified under the kingdom fungi which contain a cell wall and are omnipresent. They are classified as heterotrophs among the living organisms such as the appearance of black spots on bread left outside for some days, the mushrooms and the yeast cells which are commonly used for the production of beer and bread are also fungi. They are also found in most skin fashions and other fungal diseases. Almost all of the fungi have a filamentous structure except the yeast cell. They can be either single cell or multicellular organisms. Next, fungi consists of long thread-like structures known as hyphae and these hyphae together form a mesh-like structure called mycelium. Fungi possesses a cell wall which is made out of chitin and polysaccharides. Besides, the cell wall comprises a protoplast which is differentiated into other cell parts such as cell membrane, cytoplasm, cell organelles, and nuclei. The nucleus is then clear with chromatin traits and lastly the nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane let's know about characteristic of fungi fungi are eukaryotic non-vascular non-motai and heterotrophic organism they may be unicellular or filamentous fungi reproduce by means of spore fungi also lack chlorophyll and hence cannot perform photosynthesis fungi store their food in the form of starch the nuclei of the fungi are very small and the last one is the mode of reproduction for fungi is sexual or asexual on the basis of nutrition kidney fungi can be classified into three groups. The first one is saprophyte. The fungi obtain their nutrition by feeding on dead organic substances. The second one is parasite. The fungi obtain their nutrition by living on other living organisms, plants and animals and absorb the nutrition from their host. And the last one is symbiotic. These fungi live by having an interdependent relationship with other species in which both are mutually benefit.
Based on spore formation, kinder fungi are classified into four. The first one is zygomycin. These are formed by the fusion of two different cells. The sexual spore are known as zygospores, while the asexual spore are known as sporagiospore. The hyphae are without the septa. The next one is ascomycin. They are also called sex fungi. They can be uh, coprophilus, decomposer, uh, prosite, or saprophyte. The sexual spore are called ascopores. A sexual reproduction occurs by conidiospores. The next one is basiodomycetes. Mushrooms are the most commonly found basiodomycetes and mostly live as parasites. Sexual reproduction occurs by basiodospore. A sexual reproduction occurs by conidia budding or fragmentation. The last one is theotromycetes. They are otherwise called imperfect fungi as they don't, do not follow the regular reproduction cycle as the other fungi. They do not reproduce sexually. A sexually reproduction occurs by conidia. Reproduction of fungi. Fungi reproduction has two types which are asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. The asexual reproduction of fungi such as budding whereas the part of the parent cell divide creating a new bud and when it does detach itself from the parents. Also reproduce sexually through spore production, fragmentation or the formation of specialized cells called conidia allowing for rapid propagation and adaptation to diverse environment. And the second point, we have sexual reproduction in fungi. It typically involves the fusion of specialized cells called gametes from two different mating types, resulting in the formation of a zygote that develops into a spore-producing structure. This process allows for genetic diversity and adaptation to changing environmental conditions. Next, we go to the uses of fungi. Fungi or fungus basically used for various purposes such as natural recycling agent, as medicines such as antibiotic. Also, we have yeast which is for food making and also mold which is for food spoilage. So some of the examples of fungi which is um, yeast, we have mushroom, molds, truffles, and many more of them. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today, I'll be talking about Kingdom Plantae. In the early earth, land was scarce, leading to life being restricted in the sea. Land was invaded by cyanobacteria, green algae, and fungi which grew symbiotically near the water edges. This led to the accumulation of volcanic waste, creating soil that enriched mosses and other plants. Recent data also suggest that land plants may have ancestors from green algae, cherophytes or stonewoods, which possess a polymer called sporopolyne to prevent zygotes from drying out. Today, there is a rich diversity of green plants that produce carbon compounds and energy using sunlight. Moving on, every plant has some general characteristics. They are multicellular photoautotrophs, have chlorophylls A and B, and have accessory pigments such as yellow and orange carotenoids. Moreover, they also store carbohydrates as starch. Lastly, their cell wall consists of cellulose as the major component. From the past to the present, plants have adapted in surviving on land and continue to colonize it. How they do it? First, adaptations on land involve the aspect of apical meristem, which is root system in the underground and shoot systems on the above ground, and lateral meristem aspect which is vascular tissue and water conservation. Secondly, adaptations in land colonization involve secondary compound production diploid dominance from haploid, where alternation of generation life cycle occur, and evolution of pollen and seeds. That's all from me. Now, we will see plant groups by Mustakim and Dani. There are four major groups of plants. Bryophyte, known as non-vascular plant. Peridophyte, uh, identified as seedless vascular plant. Nest is 
gymnosperm known as seed bearing vascular plant and lastly angiosperm known as seed bearing and flowering vascular plant. Bryophyte, a non-vascular plant with simple structure that lack of vascular system, absence of roots and shoot and they reproduce by a spore relying on water for fertilization. Bryophyte have three phylum. First is Bryophyta, known as mosses. Next is Hepatophyta, known as liverwood. And lastly, Entocerophyta, known as hornwood. Pteridophyte, a seedless vascular plant with true roots, stem, and leaf. And they reproduce by a spore with their gametophyte requiring water for fertilization. Pteridophyte have two phylum. First is pterodophyte consists of fern, hostile and with fern. Second phylum is lycophyta consists of club mosses, spike mosses and pivot. Biology consider high plants to be those that reproduce by making seeds while spore making plants cannot reproduce without a watery environment. Seeds plants are able to live in a much wider range of habitats. Seeds plants are divided into two basic groups. First are the genosperm plants that produce seeds that lack an outer coat trees like pines and firs whose reproductive organs are contained in woody coats are the moss genosperms. The second and the most advanced group of seed plants are the angiosperms. Angiosperms are plants that make flowers and produce seeds that encase in a protective outer coat. Of all plants on earth, those that make flower are by far the most diverse and most successful. In fact, they make up over 18% of all plant species. Flowers are highly developed reproductive structure whose function is to produce seeds. The lily sincere is a typical flower. Rising from the center of the petals are its female reproductive parts. First is a sticky structure called the stigma. It is connected to a shelf called the style which in turn is attached to the ovary where egg cells are produced. Altogether, stigma style and ovary are called the pistil. Surrounding the pistil are the male reproductive parts of the flower. The anthers where pollen is made and the filaments upon which is the anthers. Together, the anthers and the filaments are called stamens.